Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Could I uh, also start by acknowledging the traditional owners of our land, the Aboriginal people, um, their elders past and present. Um, can I also uh, thank you, Albert, for your kind invitation for me to speak today. Um, and, and can I also um, acknowledge Shane Mallard. Um, fantastic to have worked with you um, in the past uh, probably year or so, <clears throat> but um, you're a fantastic voice for the LGBTIQ communities and um, it's very, very good to have you in Parliament and, and therefore the community's safe. Um, uh, Kat, thank you for your, for your uh, presentation. Um, wow, you've got some energy. I could, I could use some of that tomorrow, I think. Um, <clears throat> but thank you for that. Um, uh, and can I could also acknowledge the 78ers in the room. I'll speak a little bit more about 78ers and also the 78ers movement, which has been so important to Mardi Gras. Um, who would have thought that something that starts as a protest uh, ends in celebration and attracting 300,000 people to the centre of Sydney to do so? Um, Mardi Gras brings people together and I think that is what matters, uh, bringing people together to celebrate sexuality and gender diversity, not forgetting the intersex portion of the, of the communities. Um, the police operation for Mardi Gras, I am the police commander for Mardi Gras, um, but, but I don't stand before you as the fun police. Um, I stand before you as a person who will say to you that every single police officer that is deployed to Mardi Gras is on a safety mission. They are there for, for people's safety. Um, if people are coming into the parade that don't come in the spirit of Mardi Gras and the spirit of celebration, then it's up to the police to engage early and make sure that everybody else has the comfort of, of knowing that there is a secure environment and a safe environment to celebrate Mardi Gras. Uh, we've been working closely with the Sydney Gay and Lesbian Mardi Gras, um, many New South Wales government agencies and landowners to make sure that your parade is secure. Uh, we've thought about the uh, hostile bit of, uh, vehicle mitigation strategies. We've thought about uh, how best to make certain that the footprint is secure and that you are safe. Uh, we've allocated a similar number of police this year to last year. I know that's always been a contentious issue, uh, but you won't necessarily see uh, as many police as we have deployed because many are on public transport and many are in highway patrol cars to make sure that we engage early with people coming into the parade footprint. Um, ultimately, uh, as I said, around about 1,000 police, they come from uh, places like general duties. Uh, you'll see people... Uh, Police officers on bikes, not necessarily bikes on bikes, although they, they may well be. Um, <laughs> uh, you'll also see some, some horses around and some licensing police. Uh, you'll see um, uh, certainly some people from the Transport Command, but uh, we will be really focused on crowd movements. We want people to be able to move around and, and have a really good experience, be able to see the parade from the most um, accessible vantage point. So, you know, from the very start of the parade, which obviously fills up very early, um, and then pushing that crowd down to uh, Anzac to, to uh, Anzac Parade uh, for the finish and, and the big finale for those floats that go through. Um, Twelve and a half thousand entrants. Um, that, that's uh, that's consistent with a record. Uh, Three hundred thousand people is what we're preparing for, um, and that would be consistent with a record as well. But year on year, the crowds keep growing, and uh, it's so fantastic to see. Um, we'll be closely monitoring alcohol-related violence. We'll be trying to remove alcohol from the footprint. Um, and we'll be really concentrating on underage drinking. We had some problems with underage drinking last year that we really want to address early this year. Uh, and there'll be plenty of police from the Youth Command who have a great deal of empathy for youth on the streets and, and also will take care of them. Uh, there's just one, um, one milestone for the New South Wales Police Force this year and that's 30 years of our Gay, Lesbian Liaison Officer Network. Uh, LGBTIQ Liaison Officers, we call them now, but. Uh, the Gaia Network is what they've traditionally been known. And in, two, in, in 1990, we started with about nine people in the Gaia Network. We've now got more than 240 Glows right across the state. Um, and it's fantastic to see when you've got police officers that, from the, from the academy, uh, are joining the police, whether they be gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender. The important part about our community within the police is that they're now out and they're comfortable to come out. And that gives me a great deal of pleasure to, 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 to know that we have a culture that supports people being out and if they so choose to be, uh, being out and being accepted by the police force. Um, can I just finish by saying that um, I've acknowledged the 78ers, but 
The suffering of the 78 is to bring about what we see today is not lost on a modern police force. Um, and, and I do acknowledge that the 78s were poorly treated by the police in 1978. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And uh, the heavy handedness should well have disappeared. Uh, certainly before this time, but I guarantee you that you won't see that this time. Um, so uh, can I simply say that uh, thank you to our gay lesbian liaison officers, thank you to the 78ers, um, thank you to uh, the organising committee, Sydney uh, Gay and Lesbian Mardi Gras and a happy Mardi Gras to you all.